All right, first up this morning, how's your garden doing this year? Perhaps you could use the help of some friends, little pollinator friends, we <laughs> That's mean. That's right. Pollinators like bees and butterflies, they're needed to help us grow our fruits and vegetables. So the plant doctor, Melinda Myers, is in the house with ways to make your yard more pollinator friendly. Good to see you. Good great morning. to be here. We often think of vegetables as in a garden all by themselves. Right. And mm -hmm. it's good to bring some of the flowers into your garden or your vegetables into the flower garden. When I gardened in the city of Milwaukee for many years, I I had limited space, but I wanted it all. Right. So I would mix my herbs and vegetables with my flowers. It was a beautiful garden. I got the pollinators there to take care of business. Now the tomato next to you, Tiffany, yep. it depends Ready on when. Eat. I know, it's right an here. early girl bush. It depends yeah. on when to pollinate, but the way the flowers are designed, bumblebees, you may see bumblebees oh, on there, and they'll help spread the pollen, so increase production as well. Okay. And so I also brought along a candy cane. I don't know if you can see this okay. A candy Candy cane, sweet pepper. So you can see the leaves are variegated. Oh yeah. And the fruit is also variegated. I don't think I have any uh, peppers forming yet, but at State Fair we have a few examples. And so bringing those pollinators in is good for us, but we also need to protect them when we get them into the garden. I like that idea of allowing everything, everybody in your garden to co-mingle. Yes. Um, it be, and you say it's important to remember too that what's good for pollinators is good for the environment. It's good for mm -hmm. us. Exactly. So if we're seeing butterflies and bees, we've got a healthy place for them to live and also for us. And a lot of us grow our own vegetables because we want to control what goes on those vegetables. Right. We want to make sure we know that those plants, the vegetables we eat are safe. Well, I like that you say that because in general, I think oftentimes uh, on our deck or wherever we are, we kind of want to keep bees away, but really it's the bumblebees and all this and we need them to do this for us. So we don't want that. How can you incorporate some more like local um, native, I plants? guess, native plants? Yeah, that'll help attract them to the plants and keep them in the space where they're good and healthy. And one of the things about bees and bumblebees, as long as you don't mess with their house, they're not going to bother you. Yeah, they're they so drugged out on the nectar, they don't really <laughs> right. care what you're doing. You? So I went through my garden this morning and picked a few things that some of the pioneers like. Nasturtiums are an edible flower. They're not native, but they're okay. fun for the hummingbirds. Okay. But the tall plant with it is a nodding allium, a native flowering onion. And oh. so it will recede and spread and hummingbirds and butterflies and bees like that. Behind that, that purple flower is a phlox. And we have native garden phlox. That happens to be a cultivar of our native. Yeah, you may need to move that out. Thank you. And it's nice and fragrant. It resists mildew. And in front of that is the orange butterfly weed. Great. Oh, I'm right sorry. There. Oh, right. There. I jumped around here. Is the uh, butterfly weed? It's a type okay. of milkweed that is great for the monarch. So the adults and many other butterflies and bees will nectar on it, but then they lay their eggs and the caterpillars I need love the, the milkweed. the color of the things yeah, that attract our bee friends and our butterflies. Because often I think of grass. Right. And that's great for skippers. I brought along, so those are the caterpillars of butterflies mm -hmm. called skippers. So they are important, they add a texture and motion, but look at all these flowers. The tall yeah. spiky purple is liatris. This one? Gay feather, yes, which yeah. is another native and it blooms from the top down, so it's kind of cool. Right. And then this guy? that's a cone flower, our native cone flower. I see a flower. lot of these right now all over prairies. Exactly, mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. excellent. Many people have a lot of natives in their garden and don't realize it because cone yeah. flowers are probably the most popular native in the garden right okay. now. And the birds love the seeds. So we're not only bringing in the pollinators and enjoying the butterflies and bees in the summer, but then the birds come back and munch on the well, seeds. And I think of American Transmission Company doing things, mm -hmm. you know, with the power lines and bringing native plants and pollinator plants to those areas under the, the, the wires, but they also do things to help individual gardeners, which I think is to your point. Oh, exactly. So we all want our power and we need those transmission lines. So they're taking something where they have to clear that area so we keep trees and shrubs away from the power line so everyone's safe and we get our power, but then they're putting pollinator friendly plants. So they're bringing in, creating that corridor and habitat. So the more habitat our pollinators have, the more pollinators we'll see, and that's gonna spill over into our garden. So by creating these, these corridors of native plants, we're all benefiting. Love it. There's yeah. a, a free pollinator guide too. Is there anything here you wanted to show us? Yeah, I just- Help with that or anything? Yeah, that so know? if you come visit me at the fair, we have a goodie bag, which includes a pollinator 
pollinator guide and mm -hmm. seeds from American Transmission Company, but if we're bringing in the good guys, we don't want to kill them when we control the bad guys. So for aphids, a yellow bowl filled with soapy water. The aphids are attracted to the yellow. What they're, are aphids? I'm sorry, they're plant, they suck plant juices. They're little teardrop shaped insects. They often cluster at the new growth and so they can cause your leaves to Wait, yellow. They're bugs? They're bugs. I'm okay. sorry, they're bugs, sorry. <laughs> On a yeah. like, Wait, I didn't want to. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for keeping me on track here. And some people call them plant lice, how disgusting. Okay. Yeah. And so ladybugs will eat them. Mm -hmm. So if you can wait, um, that will help. So you don't want to kill the ladybugs that move in, but they'll be attracted to the yellow. They fall in the soapy well, so. water, drown and die. Oh, super simple. Powdery mildew, that white substance on the leaves of cucumbers, squash mm -hmm. and melons. Um, baking soda, Cornell University found that a tablespoon of this and a couple tablespoons of lightweight horticulture oil that okay. acts as a spreader sticker can help control that. So it's a very environmentally safe method. And I just wanted to say things like squash, melons, um, so little. cucumbers need bees to pollinate. Yeah. So the first flush of flowers are all male. The second flush are male and female. You can tell this is a female because we've got a little zucchini forming. Yeah. So be patient. If you've got flowers and no fruit, wait for the pollinators and the female flowers and you'll have lots of good things. Gotta too. bring them in. It's awesome. I don't know if there's anything we missed here. We we're going to talk about the free downloadable guide. Yep, we got that there. And okay. You can get it at atc-growsmart.com. That's where you can download it for free. And Melinda, you're also going to be at the state fair as well so people can find you there and then again here's where you download it you'll be at the fair the first through the 11th at 10 a.m and 2 p.m daily at the we energies energy park right we're going to talk about gardening for your health and well-being which includes bringing pollinators in so that you have a good garden and things we can do to keep healthy and our environment healthy and of course i'll answer questions as long as they let me and don't kick <laughs> me off the stage or they all ever all the people leave so perfect always great. happy to be there good yeah, to see you very nice thanks Love it great advice yeah